we move on to the next presentation, I want to give you a challenge and hope you'll answer it in the chat. I'm going to give you a myth and I want you to provide ideas, your ideas for why it is a myth. Here goes. Proficiency is an, the important goal in all classrooms in Kentucky. Proficiency is important as the goal in all classrooms in Kentucky. Tell us in the chat why that is a myth, and we'll come back to that at a later time. Okay. So to hear about what's going on at the state level, Kathy Anderson is here, and Kathy represents gifted education in the Kentucky Department of Education. And I am so happy to welcome her here to give us an update on what do we need to know about what's going on for gifted education in your area, Kathy. Welcome. Dr. Roberts, before we do that, I think we have a welcome from um, Commissioner Glass. Do you wanna play that? Oh, that'd be fine. Absolutely. Okay. Kathy, you pause and we'll play the video. We'll okay. be with you in just a second, Kathy. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Glass, Kentucky's Education Commissioner and Chief Learner. It's an honor to welcome our esteemed, gifted, and talented educators as we embark on the 2023-24 school year. I'm deeply appreciative of the Kentucky Association for Gifted Education and the Center for Gifted Studies at Western Kentucky University for hosting this invaluable gifted education update. In our schools, we know that providing an equitable opportunity for all children to access gifted services remains paramount. Equally vital is the role our gifted educators play in challenging every student to become the best versions of themselves, regardless of where they are on their academic journey. As Kentucky's Education Commissioner, I've had the privilege of working alongside dedicated, dedicated educators like yourselves. Your commitment to excellence and tireless efforts have left an unforgettable mark on me, both personally and professionally. And as I prepare to transition to a new role, I want to express my gratitude for the opportunity to collaborate with each of you. Though I will be moving on soon, know that the Kentucky Department of Education's dedication to equity in education will remain. While we've embarked on the journey of our new vision, United We Learn, inspired by the voices of countless Kentuckians, the heart of the department's mission remains the same. KDE is determined to create vibrant, immersive learning experiences that fuel curiosity, motivation, and engagement, empowering students to navigate the rapidly evolving world they're inheriting. The call for greater innovation in our schools, as expressed by our fellow Kentuckians, resonates deeply with the team here at KDE which is where you, our gifted educators, hold a pivotal role. Your expertise, passion, and innovative approach are crucial in shaping the dynamic learning environments that our students need. Acknowledging the unique needs of our gifted and talented students, we have to continue to provide vibrant learning experiences through innovative methods. Balancing this innovation with appropriate services is the key to sustaining their engagement, helping them achieve content mastery and affording them opportunities for enrichment and acceleration. Having once walked the path, the path of a classroom educator myself, I understand the challenges you face daily. However, I have full confidence that the dedication and resilience of our gifted educators here in the Commonwealth will continue to shine, ensuring the best outcomes for our students. You've been the driving force behind our progress, and I'm excited to witness the continued positive impact of your dedication and innovation in the years to come. how special it is to hear Commissioner Glass talk about the importance, important role that all of you as gifted educators, as parents, as those who champion gifted education in Kentucky play. Boy, that's a perfect setup for you, Kathy. So share with us what you have, um, as what's going on at KDE in gifted ed. Well, I'm so um, appreciative of the invitation to be here today. And let me uh, share my screen with you and we'll get started. Um, for some reason, Tyler, I'm not seeing my PowerPoint now like I did earlier. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, but maybe if I share 
this screen. I'll be able to bring up my PowerPoint. You'll be able to see it, I hope. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. If you want to go into presentation mode, there we All go. Right. Okay. Perfect. All right. Wonderful. So, uh, hello, everybody. I'm Kathy Anderson. I'm the gifted education consultant for the Kentucky Department of Education. And I really appreciate all of you being here. I was looking at some of the names that were attending today and noticed uh, that I uh, recognize several of your names, those of you who've contacted me about uh, different uh, gifted topics uh, lately. So uh, if you've got any questions, uh, my information will be at the end of this slide. I always feel welcome to uh, reach out to me. All right. Move that out of the way. Um, so here are the update topics today. I'm going to talk about the Office of Special Education and Early Learning, OSEAL, uh, North Star Priorities. The program Gifted Education is in this office along with um, special education and uh, extra school services and extra student services and also preschool. So Gifted Education is one of the programs in OSEAL. Also, I'm going to share a little bit of information about the State Advisory Council for Gifted and Talented Education. Uh, this is a council uh, that is um, supervised by regulation, Kentucky uh, Administrative Regulation, and also uh, members are appointed by the governor. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Gifted and Talented Coordinator One Stop. This is a SharePoint site in which we have moved all of our coordinator uh, resources. And uh, last but not least, I'll talk a little bit about gifted program funding. All right, so let me just talk a little bit about OSEAL uh, North Star priorities. So in our office, we have priorities, just as I'm sure you do in your school districts, uh, which we use to ensure that uh, we are gathering data about in order to um, plan training, and also guidance across the state. So I won't read all of these to you. Uh, you can see them for yourself. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we have many uh, opportunities there uh, for working with uh, districts and gathering information in order to provide support across the state. All right, next I'm gonna talk about the State Advisory Council for Gifted and Talented Education. So our next meeting, our first meeting of the school year is coming up soon. It will be on September 20th, 2023. Uh, if you'd like to watch this meeting, you can through the KDE Media Portal. Uh, if you don't have time to watch it, you know, uh, when it's being streamed, you can also go back and watch it later because these are archived also on the KDE media portal. For the past uh, couple of years, we've been working on several different priorities. Uh, the first priority is about the equity of uh, practices and identification uh, and services for students. Uh, that priority statement from the council was that they recommended that the KDE support districts and identification practices and services that are equitable for all students, including those who are twice exceptional, English learners, students associated with racial and ethnic groups, all socioeconomic students and students with special considerations to remove barriers for equal opportunity access. And so over the past couple of years, I have tried to uh, work with um, CAGE and also other partners across uh, our state and across the nation. And um, there we have created a twice exceptional uh, PowerPoint and video uh, that is on the GT coordinator one stop. If you have a chance, uh, please. Uh, um, also, uh, another priority has been clarity on accommodations for GT identification and testing. Uh, just recently, I've answered questions about accommodations for, for GT learners. And um, so one thing to remember is, is that there is a Kentucky administrative regulation. It's 707 KAR. Uh, 1 colon 320 section 5 subsection 10 that states that if a student has a 
uh, individual education program, an IEP, uh, it must contain a statement about individual uh, accommodations to be provided by uh, the child to participate in state and district-wide assessments. Um, so as you can see, if a student has an IEP, uh, they must be provided their accommodations for state and district-wide testing. Last but not least, there is also a priority of statements, a priority statement for social emotional support for gifted and talented students. And um, in this statement, uh, the advisory council recommended that the KDE contact districts to highlight the importance of social emotional learning uh, needs of our gifted students and gather resources. Uh, the very various role, group, role groups such as uh, school psychologists, counselors, teachers, and parents can use to address the needs of these students. And uh, several years ago, in collaboration with um, the State Advisory Council, a so social emotional guidance document was created. And you can find that document on um, the GT Coordinator One Stop, as well as the forward-facing KDE GT webpage. Just a few uh, more thoughts about uh, equal access and equity. That's something that CAGE, as well as the Department of Education, has really focused on the past several years. We want to ensure that um, students are, as I said before, provided their accommodations if they do have an individual education program or um, if they have other needs. And so it's really important to, to note that in the gifted education um, regulation that it states uh, in section three, subsection three, that a local school district shall provide a system for diagnostic screening and identification of gifted behaviors and talents, which provides equal access for racial and ethnic minority children, disadvantaged children, and children with disabilities. And for more information about this, uh, again, there is um, the new coordinator training that is available on the GT One Stop. And I also will be touching on this in the beginning of the tr your training that will be coming out very soon by September 1st, which I believe, believe it or not, is next Friday. So that's a good segue into just talking about the other resources and things that are on the GT Coordinator One Stop. Uh, as I said before, the GT Coordinator One Stop is a SharePoint site. Uh, you do need access to that, and I can help you uh, be granted access to the One Stop if you don't have access to that. Uh, so please contact me if you do not have access to the One Stop. All right, so on the, the One Stop, one of the things I'd like to really talk about this morning is the new Gifted Student Service Plan. So um, for many years, we have uh, worked to improve the Gifted Student Service Plan. I know when Toddy and I first began working uh, in gifted education, hard to believe, 10 plus years ago, this is something that we talked about a long time ago. And we did have a uh, custom form in Infinite Campus, but it was something that uh, took quite a bit of time uh, to click on and to uh, put all the different uh, areas that a student might be identified for. It, it still took quite a bit of time to complete the form, um, but it did, it did transfer with a student and it could be copied. There were lots of good things about it, but uh, this past summer, we worked with the Office of Educational Technology to uh, create even a better product. And so I really would uh, uh, encourage you if you hadn't had a chance to, to look at this new product. So this new product, it auto-populates from the service delivery options that are marked in a student's gifted and talented record. So it's just pulling right from the record. There's nothing that you have to click on or pull. It just automatically pop populates. Also, you'll notice when you uh, are in a student's record, you'll see a, a text box at the bottom now. And this is where comments can be added to the GT record that will show on the GSSP. So if you wanna add a comment about how uh, parents or families can contact you, uh, if they have any concerns about service, that's a good, that's a big, good place to put that. Or if you wanna give more information to parents and families about the services their student will be receiving, that would be a good place to put um, put those comments is in the comments box at the bottom of the student's 
um, uh, GT record that will then auto populate when you create the gifted student service plan. Uh, also, the gifted student service plan transfers with a student and is imported through the records transfer process. And a report can be generated to show which students are in uh, the GSSP portal. So this means that you can uh, generate a report that shows you uh, which students are showing for parents in the portal. Also, uh, a really neat uh, tool is the portal update tool. Uh, this turns on the GSSPs. Uh, you don't have to do them one at a time now. You can turn you know, a whole school of GSSPs on at one time or a whole district on at one time. Also, you can turn them off all at one time. So this is a really great tool and I hope that you will investigate uh, this tool more. Uh, because by regulation, we do have to notify parents of their gifted student service plan or the services that are in their students' gifted student service plan each year. And this would be uh, a good way to do that, that hopefully will really cut down on the amount of time that you spend on paperwork and administration. There is a gifted student uh, service plan training that I created. Whoops, let me go back. So I know that I jumped. Uh, on the, the, the GT coordinator one stop, um, it goes over how to create this gifted student service plan. Actually, there's not a whole lot of creating to do. Like I said before, you're going to check those services that are on the GT record, and those are going to auto populate for the student. If the student's identified in one area, it will create auto populate that. If the student's identified in three or four areas, it will automatically populate to the to the form. Um, also, it'll talk about this, the, the portal settings report that I talked about earlier, uh, the portal options update tool, um, how to transfer that GT record and GSSP. Uh, it'll talk about how to publish the um, GSSP to the parent and student portal. Students could see it too. And also, if you wish to print these out, how to batch print uh, the GSSP. Uh, you will need to contact your Kentucky Student Information System cases contact to give you access to these tools before you can be seen or you can use them in Infinite Campus. If you're not sure who that person is, if you'll just uh, go to the KDE Open House uh, School Directory, uh, this is a place that you can see all types of roles for each district and um, not as you know, you can find the cases person there as well as if you need to find a GT coordinator somewhere across our state. That's a good tool to use is um, the KDE open house uh, directory and it's on the very first page of the KDE web page. Some other trainings that are on the uh, GT coordinator one stop. As I mentioned before, there is the new GT coordinator training. So if you are a new coordinator or a new teacher, uh, please avail yourself of this training. I think there's some really good information in there. It covers uh, the regulations. It talks about the data standards and how important those are and the updates that have been made in, in the uh, data standards. Uh, there are some resources there that might help you in getting started with your uh, gifted program this year. Um, there was, there's also a video and PowerPoint presentation on special considerations, um, trying to kind of debunk or uh, help people understand uh, what special considerations are, uh, how those can be used and some best practices. There's also, as I said before, a recording and PowerPoint on twice exceptional students uh, that talks about the myths, uh, identification and strategies for providing services. So I hope that you'll take time uh, when you have a chance to look at these uh, trainings and the other resources that are on the GT coordinator uh, one stop. Also on the one stop, we have updated the data standards for gifted and talented. Uh, you'll notice that uh, there's been maybe some uh, worded word changes and also the directions for this new GSSP that I've talked about are also included in the gifted and talented uh, data standards uh, and also a link to the end of year processes. 
And that's something that I'll talk about later on in the year. There'll be a end of year um, training for that. Also, um, the GT uh, coordinator handbook, sample handbook, we've tried to make that a little simpler for people. And so we've taken those forms and checklists out of the uh, GT coordinator sample handbook, and we've put them as a library that you'll see over in the left-hand side of the GT coordinator one-stop. So um, for example, if someone reached out to me the other day and they asked for uh, you know, some sample forms for uh, teachers for recommendation forms. And so I pointed them towards the GT coordinator one-stop. There are several forms there for recommendations there. There's also different checklists of things to, uh, to look for for students, as well as the um, uh, jot down behaviors that were created in concert with the Western Kentucky University and Center for Gifted Studies. The jot downs are also posted in this library on the GT coordinator one-stop. If you ever have any issues, uh, I've got some open office hours uh, on Tuesday from 11 to 12 uh, Eastern Standard Time and also Wednesdays from 2.30 to 3.30 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, please use the link GSSP support or GT support to schedule a time. Uh, you'll find this link on the GT coordinator one stop. And if these hours aren't uh, best for your schedule, please reach out to me and we can work out uh, you know, another date and time to meet and for me to provide technical support to you. All right, uh, besides providing technical support and training through the GT Coordinator One Stop, uh, the Office of Special Education and Early Learning has a weekly email uh, that we send out. It's called News You Can Use. And um, as I said, Gifted education is part of uh, several other programs in the office. So when you receive the news you can use, uh, you'll need to scroll down through to see where the GT announcements are. Uh, if you've got any announcements that, that you would like for me to include, you know, please reach out to me and I'll see if I can post those also in the news you can use. Uh, if you're not receiving that, uh, uh, please check your, um, your clutter and junk folders. Sometimes when you receive uh, multiple emails, uh, well, an email is sent to multiple emails, they tend to maybe go there due to the firewalls that are set up in a district. Um, if you are a GT coordinator, you definitely should be on that listserv to receive that. But if you're not, uh, like I said before, check your junk and clutter. Uh, if that doesn't work, please reach out to me and we will work to resolve that issue. Also, we have an OCL newsletter that comes out quarterly and this contains uh, newsletters and articles and, and program news. And that's also an email that I said comes out uh, quarterly. I believe the last one just came out uh, not long ago, maybe this past week. Lastly, I'm just gonna talk for just a couple of seconds about funding. So uh, funding increased um, from 2022 to 2024. Uh, biannually, the General Assembly um, does uh, collects information about uh, you know data uh, about how to fund the gifted education program and other programs across the state. And so, um, since the uh, funding was increased, the Kentucky Department of Education looked at the funding formula and wanted to provide more equitable distribution of funds. And so, uh, the uh, calculation was changed back in 2022. And um, how that calculation works is that every district receives a base of $20,000, $20, regardless of how large or small the district is. And then there's an additional per student amount based on the previous uh, school year's uh, total uh, student enrollment. Uh, so awards uh, for each district are posted on the KDE State Grants webpage and the new fiscal year started July 1st. So if you're unsure about how much uh, funding your district received, please go to the state grants webpage and you can see that there. So that's all my news, my updates from the gifted education uh, at the KDE. Uh, there is my contact information. Please feel free to, to reach out to me either through email or give me a call. I'm always glad to help.
Kathy, would it be yes. okay if we gave individuals on this webinar an opportunity to ask a question or two? Sure, sure. If anyone has a question, please add that to the chat. And in the meantime, I'm going to uh, look at the uh, myth that I posted and see what you all have said about that. And the myth was proficiency is the important uh, goal in all classrooms in Kentucky. And one response to that is student progress should be the goal, not proficiency that is in our state. Is That is a range of score points that is based upon averages and in many times associated with less than desirable percentiles. All students should be challenged at their own levels and move along a highly personal continuum of learning. I support that 100%. So let's see if I find something else here. For some GT students, proficiency would be considered a regression instead of a progression. Instead of removing the ceiling for instead of removing the ceiling for learning, proficiency for GT learners would be adding a basement to learning. Oh my goodness, we want no basements for learning. Um, I posted that particular myth because that seems to be the predominant message that I'm hearing in, in schools across the state. It is so important for you to have a voice that would say, well, proficiency is absolutely an important goal if you have not yet reached it. But for those who have reached proficiency, it is no goal at all. So moving along on our learning journey, we must establish higher goals and actually get rid of the learning ceiling. I like to think of uh, the goal of education is what I'm going to read here. The goal of education is not to increase the amount of knowledge, but to increase the possibilities for a child to invent and discover to create people capable of doing new things. And of course, all of that is about thinking. It's about minds on learning. Are there any questions posted for Kathy? There are two questions that I see. Kathy, um, Abigail has asked, does the district need to update Infinite Campus? Our GSSPs are not auto-populating. And Leslie Van Wy, um, has a similar question. I've been entering my records and then having to add the GSSP. How does it populate? It's not happening on my end. Okay. So um, I would encourage you to go back and look at the GSSP training. And if the GSSP training doesn't answer those questions for you, then please reach out to me and we'll set up a time so that I can look at your screen and see what it looks like. It's a little hard to, to answer that question without maybe doing some one-on-one -on -one, uh, work with you guys. So if you would just, uh, you know, um, use that uh, GT support uh, office hours time. And if that time doesn't work for you, let me know and we'll set up something to look at it together. But I'm, I'm really excited that you're interested about it. Kathy, there's another question from Ashley Biggs. Um, what is the specific source of the grant funding Kentucky districts receive? Um, she said, that's wonderful that each district receives $20,000 despite the number of students served so that districts with fewer identified students can build their programs. So that money is al allocated by the, the General Assembly and um, it's, I'm not sure exactly how they decide how much money to give. Um, I know that's something that Dr. Roberts and Toddy could probably wanna talk a little bit more about. Um, I, I know that they have, uh, the legis legislators have reached out for some data about how the funds are being used. Um, and uh, I know that uh, the funds had not increased in since like the 1990s. And it went from like 6.7 billion to like 10 billion. Million. 2022 million. to 2024. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Roberts. I, no, I was just going to say 6.7 million was where gifted funding was stuck. Right, right. Decades. 
Now it may be went up a tiny bit or went down a tiny bit, but it was in that range. And in the last session, 2022, it was raised to 10 million. And for gifted ed, that was a huge boost, but it certainly isn't enough to, to, uh, to take care of even the funding of one person in, in some counties. So, Currently, CAGE is looking at uh, what the ask will be moving forward, and we have the opportunity to go before the Joint Interim Education Committee in mid-October. We think that is a wonderful opportunity to tell the story and to make an ask. This is a legislative session coming up that will be a budget session. Last one wasn't, as that's only done every other year. It is very important for you to talk to your legislators about how valuable, how important it will be to keep raising the funding for gifted education to see that the services can be provided that need to be so that our gifted children thrive. But thank you for that question. I hope I didn't misspeak. If I did, I uh, you did not. You are absolutely on target. Okay. Anything else, Tyler? For I Kathy, saw the links in the chat where they can see the award notifications by district. Um, if folks are interested, I include it fiscal year twenty three and twenty four. Otherwise, I am not seeing other questions. Um, if folks have other questions, you can drop it in the chat. Um, and if Kathy's still on. She can answer those. If not, we will email those over to her so that she can address them. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. It is so important for us to know what's going on at the state level. 